In this video, I am going to assemble and demonstrate this little gadget. But first, I need to say a few things about you, the viewers, and the channel. It'll only take a moment, so please bear with me. I just reached 2,000 subscribers, and you know what that means. 1,999 people that aren't my mom subscribe to my channel. That's a number, so this is my video acknowledgement of that number. I would like to thank all 1,999 people that aren't my mother for being with me on this unique adventure. And of course, my mother. Hi, Mom. I appreciate every view and every viewer very much because we are all given an unknown limited quantity of time and you've chosen to spend some of yours watching me. In the lifetime of this channel, you have given me five and a half thousand hours of your time. You've left 2,713 thumbs pointing the direction opposite gravity's influence. These numbers are exciting and deeply humbling. I want you all to know I appreciate you being on this journey with me. If this is your first video on this channel, I'm not sure why, but I'm glad you're here as well, and for some reason stayed this long. And I hope you'll join me for future videos. I'm going to build and explore some smarter circuits. Now that I am able to offer memberships, both here on YouTube, eventually, once they approve my application to the YouTube Partner Program, I'm going to start offering more build instructions and source code to members and patrons, Patreon linked below. Also, even if you don't become a paid member here or on Patreon, I post a Sunday update on Patreon every week that anyone can see. I also invite you to join the Smarter Circuits Discord, linked below, where there are even more perks for members. Anyone can join the Discord, but members will get things like early content and be able to give their input on unpublished rough edits of the videos I'm experimenting with. So, please consider becoming a member or patron. I won't say that very often, but it would go a long way to making more videos possible. Okay, without further ado, let's get to the gadget. The following is an assembly with a twist that I was just sort of playing around with, so I hope you enjoy it. I have two problems. One, my wife needs a new password manager, and two, I need to lose weight. So I thought, why not handle them both at the same time? That's why I'm on a treadmill. You might remember this or you might not, but this was in a previous video, and I sort of kind of covered how it was built, and I put some code for it on the, on the GitHub, I believe. But I made a better one after that. So this is the better one. Um, it's a lot smaller, obviously. Uh, there's four buttons. However, the one that we're building today only going to have two. Uh, and then it has this joystick up here. And the screen, it, it isn't half bad. I would show you what that looks like here, but I'm on a treadmill. So I'll probably cut in a little bit of video right here. I don't know. Anyway, I am going to attempt to build this on the treadmill. Uh, so yeah, so here I go. I am going to build the thing. Uh, I have here my Pico and my screen. And I have the same kit that was used to put the case on this, or the same, well, the same case. So I just need to put the layers on in the correct order with the Raspberry Pi. Uh, when they come from the place that they come from, wherever that is, um, I will link to this case below. I think it, I think I bought a three pack for 10 or $15. Might have been more than that. Anyway, uh, I bought the three pack when I bought it. It's in the order that it needs to be in the bag. At least they were when I got them. So, first is this one, and the big difference between this one, if you do get this kit, between this one and the top, this is gonna be the top eventually, is that little square cut out there. That little square cut out there is actually for a reset button that I am not going to put in. There are two reasons I am not going to put that in. One of those reasons is because, well, it's small and fiddly and I'm on a treadmill. And the second reason is it's small and fiddly and I'm on a treadmill. So uh, anyway, that's the top, that's, that's the top. 
let's do the thing. Uh, next is a piece that looks like that. And then one more piece before the pie. And that's the one that looks like that. It's the, identical to the last one, except this one is black and obviously not see-through. Then, here comes the pie. Um, you can do this, I don't know why you wouldn't have your header pins on, but if you don't have your header pins on, you could do this after you put the next piece on. But I'm gonna go ahead and put the, uh, just set the Raspberry Pi in the case like that. Obviously, the groove is where the USB thing goes. Uh, and then, there's this thinner, if you notice, this one is thinner than all of the rest of them. That one goes around the Pico because it is the mostly correct height. Uh, and then there's another one that looks just like that, except again, the not see-through black version. Um, and then last, but certainly not least, the top we discussed earlier with the little hole in it. This is about the time when you would put that in there. I've done it on other cases. The best way to do it is to hold the whole damn thing upside down. Anyway, so for those of you who might get this case or any case that's built like this for any Raspberry Pi, frankly, if it has um, any kind of protrusion that comes out of the top that's supposed to activate a button, the key is to hold the damn thing upside down. Okay. So now, I'm going to attempt to put all of these screws in. This is where it gets fun because I'm on a treadmill. Okay. I'm going to put all of the, probably didn't even see me do that. I can't actually see the screen. So I'm gonna go this way How about that. I'm gonna put the screws in from my side to yours, I'm trying to Hold myself steady and hold the subject steady. I apologize if you have any motion sickness issues <laughs> as I'm not very good at doing that. So I'm gonna switch it up here. I'm gonna hold it this way and really hope I don't drop a screw on the treadmill. Uh, and I'm gonna just put that in there like that. Why am I reaching with the what or the other? Crossing over my body, shouldn't do that. Uh, putting the last screw in. And then I'm going to hold it with two fingers to hold those screws in and flip it upside down. Uh, you may have a more convenient way to do that if you are not on a treadmill. Uh, and then I'm just going to put all the little little nuts onto the screws and I have a little screwdriver here I will tighten them good enough I don't have a wrench or anything that fits these nuts but they'll stay in place for the most part as tight as I need them to be anyway fiddly little things Oh, well, one of the screws is gone. <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, I'll sort that out later. It, it'll, it's mostly complete. I'm going to do 95% of a build today. That was... <laughs> At least I kicked it out of the track. I kicked it out of the track so it won't get caught in the treadmill. <laughs> Bug on it. Okay, so now I'm doing this fiddly work here. I'm just kind of guiding that. This way. Same situation here. Ooh. All right. There we go. Okay, now we can fit the, the screen on. And the bottom of the screen has the little marker for where the USB bit should be. And you just do this. Now it's, all of them have been a varying degree of sort of tight. 
I find that if you just sort of, you know, coerce it forwards and backwards-ish, it will make a liar out of you. on it. Okay, this bit is a little bit difficult, admittedly. Not because I'm on a treadmill. Just because it genuinely does not want to go back in there. Oh, I see why. Uh, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I put one of these on backwards. See it there? I'm missing the missing piece that is protruding here. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to take it apart now. This is... I'm going to do this over the... I'm going to do this over this. Very precariously, ladies and gentlemen. We should have circus music right about now. I should have rigged something. I tried a couple things so that I could have a work surface directly in front of me, but none of them were particularly good or safe. Uh, okay, so fortunately, <laughs> um, oh, hey. No, I'm wrong, okay. Uh, it doesn't, I'm sorry, so it doesn't have the, the cutout, but I did still have it wrong. I did not have the, the grooves grooving. Uh, the grooves are now grooving. I'm actually going to use this to hold it, I think. It ought to go in well. There it goes. Okay, wow. That was, that was pretty dumb of me. So now I'm going to put the screws back in. Uh, no, I'm not, because the screen actually covers up the holes a little bit. So, taking the screen off. Today, I'm going to build the same password manager three times. I should probably talk to that camera more, since it's better but and not in this orientation. I tried to do this in the other orientation and uh, it didn't work great. So what am I doing here? I want this to be this way. Come on, get in there. Okay, and I'm gonna do these, I think one at a time, leaving the other parts in the bin until I am actually done with the first one that on I, I might skip forward through this bit just so you guys don't get bored I don't know this is probably gonna be real fun to edit we're at 15 minutes now um, well 15 minutes of shooting on this take Ooh. <laughs> I can sort of move. I stay towards the front of the treadmill because it squeaks when I'm in the middle. If I'm right where I am, I'm just over a support bracket with legs. And it doesn't squeak when I walk on it. Last screw, second to last screw normally, but, you know, I'm kind of an idiot and decided to build a fiddly Raspberry Pi Pico case on a treadmill. But you got to admit, this is entertaining. I feel like maybe I should do all my close-up shots that camera. Okay. 
That is super tight and won't move at all, so I hope this fits. And let's make sure we have the correct orientation, which we do not. That's why we check these things. Okay, again, USB thing, USB thing. Uh, I'm going to plug this in, and then I am going to go put some software on it and test it, and I'll show you that here in a moment. Okay, I have loaded the software on the password manager. I am now going to plug it into this laptop to demonstrate. I will make these files available to patrons and members. Um, all right, so first thing that we're going to do is when we open up the uh, Pi, you will see that there is a script called make underscore pass underscore macro dot pi. Uh, if you open that and run it, you will get this little menu and you can say, I want to create, oops, you can say I want to create a password uh, and then let's say this is another test and then label and we're going to call this test two. It's actually test three, but whatever. Uh, and we're going to give it the pin one, two, three. Okay, uh, and then we'll exit the program. That has stored the file. You'll see that that just restarted. And now if I put in, let me open up a uh, blank text file here. Uh, first I'll put in the, the pin one, oops, two, three, and then I just hit a button there. And you can see that I have test pass. I, I did two test passes. Uh, and then there's our test too. You can scroll through these. So if I hit this button, it will type in the password that I put in, right? Uh, if I go down here and I'll do it again. Focus down the front. Okay, I'll hit that and it's off to the races. Okay. So now let me show you what happens. So if I press the, the joystick again, it'll, it'll lock it. Uh, let me show you what happens if I put in any key, right? So I'll just, I'll say zero, uh, I'm guessing here, it's zero, one, one, right? And then I hit the button. Oh, look, I can see your passwords. But if I press the button, it spits out junk because it requires your pin for the encryption as a seed. So it'll let you put in the wrong seed. Uh, so yeah, so that's how it works. And uh, back to me. I want to talk about um, membership. I don't know if I have it on YouTube by the time you see this video, but you can always become a member on my Patreon as well. And I am going to start uh, making build plans, source code, that sort of thing for projects like this, um, exclusive to members, just as a sort of perk. Um, I don't like to do a lot of stuff paid, but it does take my time, and I am trying to grow. Uh, I am trying to grow a YouTube channel here, so uh, bear with me. Also, yes, if you're wondering, I am slightly out of breath, and you can probably tell, um, which is one of the reasons why I'm on this treadmill, so that I can not be out of breath when I'm on this treadmill. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I'm either ending the video right here, so thanks for listening to me walk and ramble, and I hope you'll join me for future videos as I continue building smarter circuits, or I'm going back to myself in the studio. I'm not really sure. So either way, I'll see you at some point.